We want to get started because we have the, the Deputy Secretary with us, uh, and I know the kind of precious time that it uh, takes to get on a, on a deputy's office because, you know, he's running the Interior Department, and so he's just kind of taking his lunch. As a matter of fact, I took his sandwich away from him. He didn't even, he's not even getting his sandwich. I, I did promise, though, that we, would, uh, that we would wrap up a sandwich and send it with him, and he said it has to be less than $25, and I, you know, and... And uh, I can promise you it's worth less than $25. I have no idea what it costs. I mean, that's a, that's a different matter. Um, well, uh, welcome. We're delighted that you're all here. This is, of course, uh, a continuation of our, uh, of our series of uh, conferences that we started after Macondo and trying to get an understanding of all of the challenges that uh, now come with, uh, with both deep water exploration, but also exploration uh, when a country cares about energy and also cares about the environment. And uh, a year ago, that was a red hot, intense issue, still is a latent issue of great concern. And at its core, I think there were three anxieties that uh, Americans had. They had an anxiety about technology. Does this stuff really work? You know, I mean, are we able to, manage it. Uh, second was an anxiety about the business incentives of industry and will they really be you know, attentive and careful about the environment when they are going after these resources. And third, frankly and honestly, was an anxiety about government. Is government competent to, to manage complex, sophisticated operations? And uh, so obviously this has become an important thing for us to explore. And we've had uh, eight sessions. This is our ninth session. We're actually combining uh, we've actually had a parallel series on the Arctic that we've been working, and so we've really brought the two together because in some ways this is the unarticulated anxiety that so many environmentalists have about drilling in the Arctic. You know, it's, it's, it is a pristine environment, and, and what risk does it face? And because of all of that, we needed to bring this discussion, this debate forward to all of you. And, uh, and, I'm, and I appreciate your being here. It's been a very good morning. Uh, I, I welcome David Hayes. This is, a, this is a guy who doesn't seem to learn. He keeps coming back again and again and again to serve. Uh, he's his second time as Deputy Secretary of the Interior. Uh, we worked as counterparts at that time in the Clinton administration. And I, I must say, I was uh, ad admired his, his energy and his commitment to uh, service. And of course, he's demonstrated that now in manifold times, uh, and we're really fortunate that he is back serving at this time in Interior. And these are challenging days. Uh, no one knows it better than the Secretary. So he's given us time. We're grateful to have him here. I want you to have as much opportunity as you can to uh, ask questions, and I'm going to ask uh, David Pumphrey to field that. But at this stage, let me ask you welcome uh, the Deputy Secretary of Interior, David Hayes. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, uh, John, and I was uh, complimenting John uh, before I got up here about the series uh, that uh, uh, CSIS has sponsored uh, in this space. Uh, the, these have been very important uh, meetings that many of you have been involved in. Uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we were challenged uh, last summer uh, like uh, we have never been challenged before uh, as a nation when it comes to uh, dealing with an environmental crisis associated with oil and gas development offshore. And I must say, this summer seems uh, a little more leisurely uh, than last, uh, although not all that leisurely, as I'll discuss here today. Um, uh, I want to begin with just a, a couple of framing uh, comments. Um, uh, as you know, um, the, the President has been very clear uh, that increasing uh, safe and responsible oil and gas production is a priority for him and for all of us in the administration. And uh, you'll recall on March 30th, uh, the President uh, set out a vision uh, of a broad energy policy to secure our energy future, and he set a goal of lessening our dependence on foreign oil by reducing oil imports by a third by 2025. And that is an extraordinarily significant uh, goal. And we are already well on our way toward that goal. Uh, for those of us who, whose minds are a little bit stuck in the past uh, 
as, as uh, we have heard uh, th through our careers about the continued creep up of, of the percentage of oil that we import in the United States, uh, it's somewhat surprising and, and jarring uh, in some respects in a positive way uh, to know that for the first time we're in many, many years, we're importing less than half of the oil that we use in the United States. You, you'll recall from, uh, from those of us who are, uh, remember back to the, uh, the oil shocks in the, in the 70s and beyond, the continued creep up uh, into the 60s with projections into the 70s. Well, we in, we've increased domestic production and we've reduced our imports significantly by 7% in the last two years alone, and we want to continue on that path, and the President has challenged us to do that. Now, to achieve that goal, uh, we know we're going to need a, a suite of uh, activities uh, uh, to, to, to do that, and part of that is taking advantage of all the resources we have available here in the U.S., which is why the President has put together a, a plan uh, to responsibly develop oil and gas uh, at home, while at the same time leveraging cleaner alternative fuels and increasing efficiency uh, to build a 21st century clean energy economy over the, over the long haul. And I should say the Interior Department has a big role in this regard, both in terms of conventional energy and in terms of renewable energy. You know, uh, one-third of our oil supplies, our domestic oil supplies, come from lands or offshore that we manage at the Interior Department. Um, and on the renewable side, the clean energy side, we are making huge strides toward using our public lands and our offshore resources, offshore renewable resources like Atlantic Wind, to contribute to this secure energy future. Just last year, we permitted 4,000 megawatts of new wind and solar and geothermal power on our public lands. That's the equivalent of 10 coal-fired power plants. We're going to do, we hope to do the same this year, maybe more. We have a pipeline to keep this going. This is significant new development under this administration uh, uh, on the renewable side. Uh, but let's get back to, uh, to, to the, the President's overall vision. Uh, the President, when he announced uh, the, uh, the, his new energy plan, uh, he made it clear uh, in the blueprint document that was uh, released in March uh, that one size does not fit all and that different regions uh, require uh, different uh, types of focus uh, and attention. Um, and Alaska is one of those places. Uh, it's a unique place. Uh, as all of you know, its natural resources offer significant promise for energy development uh, while posing special challenges with the uh, Arctic environment. Uh, its heritage is rich and diverse, and the development must take into account the cultural, economic, and subsistence needs of different communities. It is a very uh, special place. Now, we have many agencies across the federal government with a stake in uh, Alaska and in, uh, in working with the state and communities and responsibly developing energy there. Um, obviously, the Interior Department, uh, through the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management Regulation and Enforcement, has responsibility for overseeing the development of offshore Alaska resources, uh, specifically in the Beaufort and Chukchi uh, seas. And you have heard Mike Bromwich in previous uh, meetings here at CSIS talk generally about uh, how BOMER is upgrading the safety requirements uh, and environmental response requirements uh, expected uh, for offshore general, uh, development. Uh, needless to say, we are, we are uh, taking that same message to Alaska, and we're currently reviewing Shell's proposed plans to drill exploration wells in both the Beaufort and the Chukchi uh, next summer. Um, uh, also, Shell, of course, will need to get approval from NOAA, another federal agency uh, with jurisdiction here to, uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, potential impacts on marine mammals. Um, onshore, the, the Bureau of Land Management has vast responsibilities in Alaska, including uh, in the oil and gas sector. Uh, and BLM manages the 23 million acre National Petroleum Reserve, and BLM is currently uh, actively involved in uh, uh, looking to facilitate responsible development in the MPRA. Um, the MPRA, which is estimated to 
uh, contain uh, perhaps a, uh, a billion barrels of conventional undiscovered oil and 53 trillion cubic feet of conventional undiscovered non-associated gas. We recently announced within the last two weeks that we will hold a lease sale in the NPRA later this year and every year annually uh, thereafter to spur domestic energy production. BLM is also uh, in the midst of preparing a new land use plan for the entire 23 million acre planning area that will analyze uh, potential uh, future oil and gas development, protection of uh, surface, uh, special resources, um, management of subsistence resources, and opportunities con to construct necessary onshore infrastructure. Uh, including potentially pipelines uh, to uh, potentially bring oil and gas from the Chukchi uh, to the transatlantic uh, pipeline system. A draft of that plan uh, uh, is being worked on now and will be, uh, should be ready by early next year. And as I understand came up this morning, we're also working uh, to uh, facilitate the permitting of ConocoPhillips's proposed CD5 project uh, in the NPRA, which uh, involves the Corps of Engineers, EPA, NOAA, and our Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, uh, let me also mention one other aspect of the, of the uh, Arctic uh, that I think uh, pertains to the broader question of how to responsibly develop uh, oil and gas uh, in the Arctic. And, and that is the initiative that our administration has made to uh, work with the Arctic Council, the group of eight Arctic nations uh, that um, uh, uh, discusses shared uh, opportunities and responsibilities uh, regarding the Arctic. And until this ministerial meeting, um, this re most recent ministerial meeting in March in Nuuk, uh, Greenland, no Secretary of State had ever uh, attended and participated in an Arctic Council meeting. Uh, we changed that in a big way uh, as Secretary Clinton participated along with Secretary Salazar and myself uh, and Senator Lisa Murkowski was along uh, as well in that trip. And among other things, we put on the agenda for the Arctic Council uh, the, uh, the importance of uh, uh, working on oil spill prevention preparedness and response, uh, convening experts to, uh, to help address those issues, uh, and also uh, uh, introducing the concept of ecosystem-based management in the Arctic uh, for all Arctic nations. Uh, these are two initiatives the U.S. put on the table and that were adopted uh, by the Council and, and that will be moving forward. We think that kind of international cooperation is extremely important. The, the point, though, the general point I want to make here is that there are lots of federal interests involved and lots of agencies involved to uh, developing holistic, safe oil and gas development uh, in the Arctic. And it's also important, and perhaps more important than ever, uh, that, the, pres that the, the, the federal government, rather, speak with one voice as we address these issues. Uh, that's been a message we have received from Senator Murkowski, Senator Begich, and many others, many of you. Um, they've called for uh, more coordination on Alaska energy development and permitting. And uh, in short, we agree. Um, and recognizing this need, the president, uh, in a May 14th radio address, called for the formation of a high-level cross-agency team to support efforts in this area. Well, I'm here to announce today that the president is signing an executive order today uh, that uh, uh, implements this promise. Uh, the executive order that was just released within the last hour uh, will form an interagency working group on coordination of domestic energy development and permitting in Alaska. This working group, which will formalize interagency interactions that are already occurring, uh, will be chaired by me as the Deputy Secretary of the Department of the Interior. And it will include deputy level uh, officials from the Departments of Defense, Commerce, Agriculture, Energy, Homeland Security, EPA, and the Office of the Federal Coordinator for Alaska Natural Gas Transportation Projects. These officials will be joined by uh, White House officials, including from the Domestic Policy Council as our primary coordinating uh, uh, body, along with the Council on Environmental Equality, the Offices of Science and Technology Policy, the Office of Management and Budget, and the National Security Staff. 
this new working group will play a number of roles as part of uh, our coordinating mission that the President has charged us to implement. Uh, first, we are going to facilitate orderly and efficient decision-making processes by making sure that agencies are working together as we evaluate permits and conduct rigorous environmental reviews for onshore and offshore energy development projects in Alaska. This means communicating on schedules and progress on different pending decisions, sharing application process, uh, project information, uh, developing jointly scientific and environmental data that are needed for good decision making, uh, pulling together cultural and traditional knowledge across our agencies that are relevant. It means, to, it means making sure that we're working together as a federal family collectively to have the best information available to make the best decisions possible. Uh, the working group also will provide a venue uh, to help agencies think about immediate decisions in a more holistic context by engaging in longer-term planning and coordination efforts related to issues like spill prevention, preparedness and response, and the development of necessary infrastructure to adequately support energy development in Alaska. And finally, the working group will help facilitate a coordinated approach to collaboration with our many partners outside the federal government, be it other governments, tribal organizations, industry, stakeholders, and the nonprofit NGO community as we work through energy development and permitting issues in uh, Alaska. In fact, the executive order uh, specifies that the group will designate primary points of, con of contact to facilitate coordination with the state of Alaska and with local communities, governments, tribes, co-management organizations, and similar Alaska Native organizations regarding energy development and permitting issues in Alaska. This means that we'll be working closely with other governments permitting authorities, both in the state of Alaska and with the Alaska North Slope Borough. And we hope it will help to reinforce the importance of collaboration and consultation across different levels of government and with Native Alaskans and uh, other stakeholders. Uh, we look forward under this new executive order to continuing to work with our partners inside and outside of the federal government to facilitate safe and responsible energy development in Alaska. And we hope and expect that the formation of this new group will, will in fact, reinforce the importance of collaboration and consult consultation across different levels of government. So that's our big news of the day. Uh, and I'm going to close there, um, and we'll, uh, uh, would appreciate the opportunity to answer questions on this and, and other related subjects. Let me just say uh, that um, this uh, area of Alaskan oil and gas development is, um, is extremely important uh, to the nation and to us as uh, uh, part of the Obama administration. And we are committed, as we are in all of our um, energy activities, be they conventional, renewable, be they onshore or offshore, that we uh, proceed in a balanced, science-driven way uh, that uh, addresses uh, the needs of, of uh, industry, of the environment, and of local communities. And we look forward to this new mechanism under the President's executive order uh, to help achieve those ends. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. That's, uh, I think, very welcome news to be moving forward on uh, on setting up this uh, interagency uh, group and interagency process. So I, I'm sure it's going to stimulate a number of questions, though. So why don't we go ahead and open the floor, remembering the ground rules of uh, identifying yourself and uh, also trying to frame it in terms of a question. So floor is open. I think a lot of folks have asked for, which is sort of a coordinating mechanism. My name is Fran Ulmer, and I'm um, from the state of Alaska, but I'm here as chair of the U.S. Arctic Research Commission. Um, I assume that this is not a one-stop permitting office. It is really a way of getting issues on the table for agencies to talk 
through various concerns. It may be too soon to say because the executive order is just coming down today, but could you talk a little bit about how you will actually do business, your vision as, as chair of how you will, how issues will come to you, how that will affect decisions by the various agencies as they are reviewing permits and making choices about investments, et cetera? Certainly, thank you, Fran. And thank you for your service in so many capacities, including on the Deepwater Horizon uh, Commission. Um, uh, and now with the uh, science orientation. Um, uh, you're right, I, we're, n we're not looking to this uh, group to be a, a, a super permitting uh, agency, one-stop shop in terms of uh, 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 all uh, permit activities is concentrated and comes out of this group. We're really a coordinating group. Uh, each agency continues to have their jurisdictional responsibilities under their statutory uh, uh, frameworks. Um, the primary uh, purpose of this is to ensure coordination uh, and uh, broad sharing of information uh, and, uh, and, and, and timely uh, uh, response uh, to uh, permitting windows and, and permitting uh, needs. Um, uh, uh, and there, there, uh, uh, you know, there are special challenges in Alaska um, uh, in that regard. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I will say we we we're, we're we're having somewhat of a dry run of this right now as we work with Shell, um, and uh, as as they look uh, uh, as they put together their applications for exploratory drilling for next summer, um, we are we are working with. Uh, uh, the other agencies that have clear permitting responsibilities along with us, including, for example, in particular, EPA and NOAA. And we're making sure that, that timing-wise, that we're all uh, synced up uh, and, and that, they're, that we, are, we are collaborating um, uh, and sharing information necessary. And it's working well, I would, I would have to say. This is really a common sense um, uh, approach uh, that is being implemented today. No questions? Jack Belcher with Energy North America. Um, I'm realizing that this has just come out and this may be premature to ask the question, but do you, do you envision this as a, as a group that is meeting uh, occasionally or is it going to be um, you know, coordinated sort of on a day-to-day -day basis? And, 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 and what do you envision in terms of the level of uh, representatives from each agency in terms of this working group? Uh, that's a that's a good question. I mean, the the working group is um, is a high level group, a deputy secretary level group, uh, and uh, I'm sure we, we will be meeting as uh, uh, as a working group uh, on a periodic basis. Uh, but much of the work will be done uh, uh, through folks uh, that are in uh, down the line in our agencies, and we will be. We're the ones who are accountable uh, to ensuring that uh, the work is proceeding and well coordinated. Um, and uh, it's it's difficult to generalize more than that at this point. Um, uh, but uh, we are being responsive to um, you know what has been uh, the concerns have been expressed that that uh, there 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 are a number of federal agencies that that have not uh, been coordinated as uh, ideally. And the president said, "We're not going to have that. We're going to make sure that we are uh, responsive and uh, work together." And and we've been doing that, and now we're formalizing it. Um, Heather, and then Brooks, and then Bruce. the secretary. Thank you very much, Heather Conley with the CSIS. Um, how would this working group then interface with the interagency policy coordination group that is charged with overall Arctic policy uh, per the uh, Presidential Directive 66 that came out on larger Arctic policy? Because this is such a vital, particularly the oil spill response prevention agreement, so vital to the future work of the Arctic Council as well as uh, the, the broader uh, needs for the capacity, how does this group, obviously focusing on the domestic energy resources, how does that work or integrate with the IPC on the broader Arctic policy and the State Department's role in that. Thank you. 
Well, that's one advantage of having this working group at a deputy secretary level, uh, because we have visibility into uh, the the, the uh, Arctic policy uh, groups uh, in general, and there are several, to be uh, frank. Uh, and uh, um, so uh, uh, that's one reason why this is um, the president has put this group together at such a high level to ensure that um, that in the focus on permitting, which is what this executive order is focused on, uh, uh, the broader pictures uh, picture of uh, activities um, across the administration and in the global context are taken into account. Thanks. Hi, David. Very nice to see you here. See you. Uh, and to see your <clears throat> involvement in these issues, which I'm sure will benefit the nation. Um, this group, you say, is going to be focused largely on permitting. But given the recent USGS report that pointed out a number of areas of deficiency in the science basis for, shall we say, rational development of the Arctic Ocean resources, will this group also have a mandate to pursue the acquisition of scientific data about uh, marine mammals, fisheries, undersea topography, the things that could matter uh, in, and, and influence development? And will there be a product of some kind that uh, describes how we're going to better and, and improve our knowledge of the Arctic as we go forward? And finally, will you be making recommendations about budgetary resources that are necessary for USGS and NOAA and other institutions? to be acquiring the knowledge that is so badly needed. Would you like to add some more parts to the question? That's a very good question. Um, uh, and uh, I'll answer it in two ways. Uh, uh, one is this, this particular working group is focused on permitting coordination. And and not uh, the uh, as as in response to my uh, Heather's question, not is not trying to do more than uh, than that. I will say though that as part of that permitting process, um, science issues are implicated, uh, oil spill response issues are implicated. Uh, so so this group I think will help as a practical matter. Uh, facilitate the exchange of information on relevant science-based, uh, um, uh, uh, relevant science information that pertains that may pertain to the permitting process, um, and and frankly, just the exercise of ensuring that top-level folks from the agencies are 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 together working on these issues uh, will facilitate uh, uh, that discussion. Uh, in terms of the broader agenda of science for the Arctic, um, that that we would not want that to be frank uh, constrained uh, by uh, an executive order that focuses on permitting issues. And the the secretary Secretary Salazar obviously has um, uh, stressed the importance of developing uh, the scientific baseline in the Arctic. Uh, by commissioning the USGS, United States Geological Survey report that was released uh, a few weeks ago uh, and that does a, a terrific job for those of you who haven't uh, accessed it of, of identifying on the one hand the tremendous volume of science that has been developed in the Arctic, uh, but it, it also recognizes the, the, the need for more coordination and additional science to be developed. Uh, and that will be a joint enterprise, clearly. Uh, NOAA has a, has a big role, uh, EPA, uh, our department, uh, other departments. Um, and, uh, and Fran Ulmer is going to bring this all together uh, <laughs> uh, in, her, in her new role. Uh, but I will say that on the science side, my impression from my visits to Alaska is that there is um, there's there's very uh, uh, there there's there's a very good science community that works together uh, in Alaska on these issues. I think the USGS report has shown that there are some um, opportunities uh, for more collaboration and more integrated science work in Alaska, 
and uh, uh, and I know it's it's very important to this administration that uh, that we that we uh, uh, proceed along those lines. There's a que uh, question here in the front, and then we'll take the the one back. Robert Shredder, International Investor. Again, a simple technical question. Because we're talking in uh, the Arctic a lot of ice and water issues, where does the Department of Interior's role end and NOAA begin? And in the event of international border disputes and the long reach, you know, the technical long reach of some of this drilling, uh, who will be the lead agency to, to fight those disputes? Um, a good question. It's one of the reasons we have this uh, coordinating group. Um, I, I, the, uh, the, the, the short answer, I guess, is that the Department of the Interior, uh, through the uh, Outer Continental Shelf Lands Management Act, has responsibility for um, uh, managing the, the Outer Continental Shelf and the, the, the lands uh, under the sea, if you will, so that our uh, we have plenary jurisdiction in terms of uh, permitting drilling activities, um, uh, any uh, activities involving the seabed directly. Uh, NOAA's jurisdiction, um, I I which they share to some extent with our Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, focuses largely on marine mammals uh, and uh, and their, uh, 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 in terms of the oil and gas uh, interaction specifically. Uh, and their potential interaction with oil and gas development. They obviously have responsibility over fisheries. Uh, one simplistic way to look at it is that they're, they're more involved in the water column as opposed to the, the, the seabed activities. Um, in terms of um, oil spill response, the, the primary uh, player offshore under the Oil Pollution Act, as, we, as you know from the uh, Macondo Well situation, is the United States Coast Guard. Uh, has has a lead role, but working very closely with both NOAA and EPA. And um, uh, uh, in terms of international, it's always the Department of State that represents the United States government. We all fall in line behind the Department of State. Good afternoon, uh, Secretary Hayes. Gary Gentile with Platts. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, we had a representative from Shell uh, up on the panel there expressing a certain amount of uh, frustration over the process that that company has um, been going through to get its permits to do, uh, do some exploratory drilling. Uh, he used terms like lack of credibility and, you know, if there were a, um, a second uh, lease sale in the Beaufort and the Chukchi, he's not sure uh, who would even show up given uh, the experiences so far. Um, how, do, how will this group uh, address some of these issues that uh, industry, uh, some of this frustration that industry has expressed? And uh, if it's not a one-stop permitting shop, how do you see its role in terms of helping uh, industry? Uh, right there? Was that you, Pete? <laughs> 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 you take the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Um, the, the reality is that, that a number of companies have made a very significant investment in uh, uh, leasing um, uh, in the uh, Arctic offshore. And um, uh, you know, we came into office uh, a, a couple of years ago. Um, last year, um, uh, after the Macondo well uh, blowout, uh, there was really a mutual decision, I think, made by Shell and the Department of the Interior to uh, not push forward uh, last summer uh, to try to do um, uh, 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 development work. Um, this summer, there were there the the. Uh, 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 there, there is not activity going on this summer um, for a variety of reasons. Um, I think there's frustration on all sides, uh, frankly. Um, what you're seeing today with this executive order and with the president's uh, comments 
uh, is a very um, firm commitment uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we on the federal side are doing what we need to do uh, to uh, work carefully with uh, industry and with other stakeholders uh, to proceed in the right way uh, and, to, and to do so uh, in a straightforward uh, way. And uh, that's our commitment. Um, and, and that's what we are doing right now. So um, uh, I'll stop with that. Oh, okay, Pete. <laughs> One second. Uh, so thank you uh, for that, Deputy Secretary. I think it is, um, you know, I, I will make a couple comments as I've got the uh, un undesired amount of attention here. Uh, the, uh, the, the work that has gone on has been important, and I think it's been a key difference in year to year. The inter uh, I don't want to call it an intervention, but the attention that's being uh, played at trying to bring these agencies together is hugely important. Um, I've worked in a number of different areas, and I don't think industry is in a position where, you know, the word I don't want to see used is streamlined, and I'm very, very happy to see nobody is talking about that. We, we need the standards, but this level of coordination is absolutely important with respect to uh, putting together a work product, I think, that's going to address all the needs that various people have. And the uh, discussions that we've had that have uh, worked through these various agencies with the White House uh, overseeing how this thing ties together, I think, is, is going to be very, very important in getting together a work product that uh, reflects all the good input from industry, stakeholders, and regulators. And so it, I'm, I'm very happy to hear the announcement today. You, you know, I, and actually, nomenclature can be important. And, and um, uh, Pete's comment about streamlining is important. Um, uh, the, the, the plan, the, the, the intent, the full intent is to have a vigorous uh, implementation of all uh, requirements uh, uh, and a, a, a comprehensive look at, at uh, proposals uh, in the Arctic uh, because the opportunities are great and the challenges are also great. Uh, so that's a very important point. Um, but but what, what also uh, popped through my head is that, that the question about whether this is a one-stop shop for permitting, I'd, I'd like to just uh, say that I think what this is is a one-stop shop for coordination of permitting, uh, which is extremely important. Uh, this is, uh, as I said before, this is not a new super permitting uh, group. Uh, each department will continue to uh, be responsible for implementing its statutory obligations as Congress requires it to do. But we will have a one-stop shop for coordinating uh, permitting of oil and gas uh, in, in the Arctic, uh, and, and this group will ensure that there is good coordination in that regard. Additional questions? Well, perhaps we can release okay. you to your sandwich, but I, I, would, <laughs> I would note, um, after many years uh, toiling in the bureaucracy of the, the, the federal government and the uh, administration branch, uh, one can't underestimate the power that comes from setting up this type of process. It may sound like another layer of bureaucracy, but I think you're to be commended for putting this together because this will draw the attention of all the relevant agencies to the fact that this is an important process to go through. So I think you're to be commended and wish you the best of luck in uh, implementation. That's always the next step, but uh, I think right. it's a great effort. And we'll okay. allow, Fran, one more. I'm a little concerned about the current budget cutting having an impact on not just your agency, EPA, <coughs> NOAA, the Coast Guard, all of the players that are so essential in being able to develop safely and responsibly. We've heard a lot of presenters this morning talking about their confidence in the ability of the United States to do oil and gas development in the Arctic, but that assumes a whole lot. It assumes that the necessary environmental and infrastructure investments are made, 
by the agencies as well as by the industry and by the state. Um, we need a new Coast Guard icebreaker. We need a whole lot of things to have the kind of search and rescue and other readiness that really will assure the level of confidence that we want to believe in. But it doesn't just happen. It takes money. And I'm very concerned about that, David, and I wonder if you'd just comment a little bit for the people who are in the room today and, frankly, for those who aren't in the room today who want to believe that the United States can move forward responsibly. It does take investment at the very same time that Congress seems totally preoccupied with the debt. Not that that's not important, but um, there are counterbalancing interests. Could you comment, please? Uh, certainly. Um, that's a very um, appropriate comment, uh, Fran. There, there is a um, uh, a premise uh, to uh, to the executive order, which is that the uh, agencies have the wherewithal uh, to um, proceed through a good permitting process with uh, industry and with other stakeholders, and. Um, uh, budgets are needed for that purpose, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the uh, to the science budget as well. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, there uh, uh, that requires resources, and there is there can be a tendency, I think, um, by those who are frustrated by uh, the fact that uh, that that permitting processes must go forward. Uh, there's a there there some have the reaction of cutting budgets uh, in those agencies uh, when that has the uh, potential to have um, a direct negative effect on economic activity uh, that, that would otherwise be facilitated by that permitting activity. Uh, we're concerned about that. We're very concerned about that. Um, and um, uh, and uh, the Arctic is a very good uh, example of an of an area that could be a, could be affected um, in significant ways by by budget implications. Needless to say, we are, as you know from previous uh, CSIS events, um, we're, we're in the process of, of very significantly reforming the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management regulation and enforcement. And um, uh, we did get some additional funds uh, from uh, for fiscal year 11 for that exercise, but the house mark uh, for the department uh, would um, uh, not come close to what we think we need in order to uh, have sufficient inspectors, uh, technical experts, and others to do the work necessary for safe offshore oil and gas drilling. Well, with that upbeat uh, assessment, uh, um, again, um, you know, congratulations on being able to pull this together, and thank you very much for joining us this right. afternoon. Good. Thank you, thank you David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.